arms trying to track my way by. But I'm glad when life beats me up in this path that I follow. I'm, I'm glad this road is just big enough for two people. And I'm glad that when I'm going down, there's no room for the Lord to stay by me. And maybe when I say, Lord, I can't go no more. He steps up and carries me and says, Lord, you can. You can do it. I say, Lord, hallelujah. I'm glad when things get rough, he carries me. I like that old story talking about footprints in the sand. Talk about her walking and he talked to the Lord and said, Lord, uh, I noticed when the storms are hard in my life that I only see one set of footprints. Does we know why? Because when things got rough, I carried you. Yeah. And you know the thing yeah. with this, when he carries you, you're still not in the same place. Yeah. But see, he's keep pressing you forward. And I'm glad. Yeah. <coughs> I'm glad even though when we just want to sit still. We just want to wallow in our self-pity. Yeah. You know, in this road, said, Lord, I'm lonely, I'm tired, I'm lonely. I don't want to do this no more. He comes in and carries us, and while he keeps pressing us forward, he encourages us and he yeah. feeds us. He says, you can do it. But I was thinking about this road, how uh, the Bible talks about why. The thing of it is, is if you follow the world, you're in this wide path. Yeah. And you know, that wide path is pretty tempting. That wide path, you see all the people, so why ain't got to be lonely? You know, I'm going to have friends with me of all these things. Yeah. And it's pretty comforting. Amen. See, that's why so many people go in. It's, it's, it's an easy road. It's an easy road. I, like it. I believe it was old Johnny Cash who said this thing. He said, it's being a Christian is for no sissies. So it takes a real man and a real woman to follow this path. Amen. And I was thinking about that. You know, he's true. Because, you know, the devil You know the devil don't get on you when you're lost because he knows you're his. But see, when you give your heart to God, that's when things start getting a little rough. Because he knows he don't got you no more. And he's going to do everything possible to get on you. You know why? Because he's mad. But I think when that happens, you just need to praise God a little bit. You need to remind the devil that you have authority over him, that he has no authority over you. Let, let me just preach a little bit. Now, I have authority over that devil. And I'm tired of him getting in my mind and getting in my business. I think we need to stand up and stand up and get the hands. Get the hands saying, I got authority over you. Put your foot down and stop on him. I'm tired of the devil getting on his children. I'm tired of the devil getting on the church. I think we need to stand up for what we know. We know it. The greater is he that is in us. And he was in the world. And see, we hear that scripture. We just say, well, yeah, I know it. But do you believe it? See, that's when things come into play. Yeah, I, I, can, I can preach this word. I can read it. Says, yeah, I read here and here this morning. You're like, oh, wow, you know he's doing good. But... Do you believe it? Yeah. Have, have you been believing it in your heart today? Yeah. And see, that's why I'm glad how the Bible talks about straight as a gate and narrow the way. There's a, uh, sometimes you go on this road and it gets a little lonely. You get this homeless heart inside of you. But see, the, there's going to come a day when we finally make it on home. Yeah. And you know, I'm glad this is not my permanent home. Yeah. I, was, um, I was driving uh, the other day from work. And the... Uh, I was just doing some thinking and sipping on a nice warm cup of coffee. Been out in the cold all day. So relax. I get on the slow lane. I went five below the speed limit, and I just set it on cruise and I just try to relax. And I was thinking and I was, I was thinking about some services and I was thinking about some certain individuals when they gave their heart to the Lord. And I can picture so vividly them coming to the altar. Uh, I see. I see it so clearly, but. I've seen something a little more clear this time than what I do. You know, you know when people go to the Lord, all them chains you know, are broken. Yeah. And, you know, and all them things are left behind. But I know that, but this time i see something a little more clear. As they came, i seen a little bit of junk falling behind them. And I said, what, what in the world is that? And, uh, i seen so much clearly. These, i I seen as they came, i seen chunks of steel and chunks of chains, a ch a, a chains and I've seen... A bunch of little junk, and I, I seen like the angels come, and they were just taking off the stuff. And I was saying, uh, Lord, this of you, and he, he brought me to old Moses when he was trying to cross the Red Sea. How the Bible said, how the enemy was coming after him in them, them chariots. The Bible says that they took off the wheels. And I was starting to envision that in my mind. I says, I wonder by the time they get up here, 
the, the old Lord's working on them, take off them chains. And I was thinking of my own heart when that happened to me. And when I was giving my heart to the Lord, I, I could envision all them chains come off in my life. And I was thankful for that. And in my car, I was just getting blessed because I envisioned by the time we come to the yard and the Lord's working in us, whether we're just struggling with some issues, whether we're just hurting, Lord, help me this morning. Now, sometimes we go through storms and trials in our life and this narrow road that we follow. But I'm glad by the time that we even make it to our knees, the Lord's been taking all that weight off of us. He's been ministering unto us. I'm telling you, this narrow road is not for the uh, for everyone. I'll be honest, but but see, I'm telling you, you can do it through Christ. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ Jesus will strengthen me. And I'm glad, you know, when I'm down and out, how the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the comforter. And I'm glad. Get this, I'm glad when you are broken, you are tired in this narrow road, yeah. that the Holy Spirit will come. Yeah. And it's just like He speaks life unto you, and you don't know what to do, but just receive it. And see, that's all you got to do this morning, is just receive it. The comforting words of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I can't explain it. I can't explain the way He does. That's why, that's why I serve Him. That's why I love Him. Because I can't do it on my own. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad the Lord puts the church on this road. I'm glad the Lord puts the Holy Spirit on this road. Yeah. And see, I, let me remind you, you are not alone on this. Mm -hmm. Then that will say, a homeless heart, well, look, uh, I'm telling you, when you're with the church, you're home. And yeah. sooner or later, you and the church is going to be on forever home. Yeah. And see, that's what we're shooting for, church. Thank you, Lord, that one day we're going to get out of this body and out of the pain of this world. And we're going to be up in heaven. Amen. No more pain. No more tears. No more sorrow. You ain't got to worry about your lost loved ones. You ain't got to worry about the pain in your body. You ain't got to worry about uh, can't sleep. Nerves getting to you. I'll tell you one day, when you get up there, it's going to be worth it all. I'm telling you, every mile that you travel on this road, it's going to be worth it. And sometimes you think, well, I, I just want to quit. I just want to get my car off, shut it off, and just stop and say, Lord, I'm done. But see, you know what I've noticed? By the time you give up, now you've allowed the Lord to take over. Yeah. It's when you give up, it's you allow the Lord to start doing hey. this thing. But see, when you think you can do it on your own, Lord, help me this morning. You ain't going to get so far, but when you just drop it all and say, Lord, I need you to take over, that's when you start doing this. Thank you, Jesus. Stop trying to do it on your own. <coughs> I'm telling you, you ain't going to get that far. You're just going to beat yourself up. But I'm telling you, if you just submit, we try to put our hands on the things, put hands on the wheels, say, I got this. And things get hard, you're barely hanging on, so I got this still. But see, it's when you let go, you allow room to lift up and praise Him. <laughs> a homeless heart. I'm telling you, maybe you're here this morning with a homeless heart. Maybe you're just burning, your heart's burning for heaven. I believe each and every one of us is yearning for heaven sooner or later. And you know, we don't truly appreciate it until mm. we're going through storms of life. We don't usually appreciate it until we lose, lo lose lost love. Yeah. That's when we really desire to make it unto heaven. And that should encourage you this morning. Maybe you got lost loved ones and you really want to come to heaven one day. Maybe you're just not going to be you're struggling and you're just yearning for that place wow. called heaven. I'm telling you, once you come, as I was, as I was saying while I was driving, by the time I made it to the order, I just seen these chains and junk leaving behind. He gave me a thought there. It says, leave the pieces behind. He gave me a thought. I'm going to preach that one day. But I'm telling you, homeless heart, maybe you're here this morning, just to need a little bit of comforting words from the comfort. I'm telling you, he'll meet you. He is not to the broken heart. As the church stands, the piano player comes. You know, maybe here this morning with a homeless heart. Maybe you feel like on this road called life. Just a little bit longer. The Bible says narrow is the way. Think of a narrow road that's real small. But I'm telling you, it's just enough room for two people. Maybe try to go on this on your own. I'm telling you, you ain't gonna go far. Won't you come this morning? Won't you come? I text up, Brother Isaiah. Got the number from.
pastor. I told him, I said, Brother well, Isaiah, I, said, I watch your videos all the time. He said, they encouraged me so much. And he texted me and said, well, thanks. I said, you know, I feel like I'm usually just preaching to myself. And you know, this morning I know what he's talking about. Sometimes the Lord comes and the message is for you. Maybe the message is for someone else this morning. I'm telling you, you don't got to be alone. That's a lie of the devil. Saying you are alone on this journey. That you're doing things on your own. I'm telling you, the Lord is there. The Bible says we never leave you nor forsake you. And that is a promise. And he never breaks his promise. I'm telling you, he's a good, good father. And the father will never break his promise to his boy or his daughter. So won't you come and just get that comfort this morning? Won't you come? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Will it be anyone else? Will it be anyone else? Maybe you're struggling a little bit on this road. Hey, maybe you're going down the wide road. And you know, you got a lot of friends, a lot of people, a lot of noise, but I'm telling you, it's just noise. All that around you. It's time to get back on track. Thank you, Lord. Lord is moving, church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? I'm telling you, it's real, church. That was after the church. He's after you. If you're doing good, you've been getting thumped on this morning. I'm telling you, you need to come and get comfort from the hand of God. Pastor Bruce preached hard you when God breathes on you. I was thinking now, watch that. And I was thinking about how much we need the breath of God in our lives. When things are rough and things are hard, I say, glory. We need the breath of God in our lives to comfort us and encourage us. I'm telling you, when things are rough, let God breathe on you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's not too late. It's not too late. I say, Lord, won't you come? Just say, would you take that step? The Lord's working. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows your friends and family what they're dealing with. And you know, He knows that that road is hard. But can I tell you, He already yeah. walked that road. He already walked it all the way to the cross to go Gotha. And you know what driven him was love. We need to keep our heart burning for Christ, loving him. And I'm telling you, he will carry us through every storm, every battle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Fathers, we bow our head. We're so thankful for these. What it kneeled at an Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We ask you, Lord, to touch us, Lord. Father, make us what you need us to be. We know we're on a straight and narrow road that leads to life everlasting. 
But sometimes, Lord, we look over and we see people being blessed on that big highway, Broadway. God, we pray, let us keep our focus on this road because it leads home, not destruction. Father, I pray, Lord, for Sister Allie's Lord, family losing her grandpa. We pray that you strengthen her family, Lord. She being the one that's serving the Lord. Father, we pray that they'll see the great light in her. Father, that she can win her loved ones. Father, thank you, Lord, for this service. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There'll be choir practice tonight at 430. Try to make it. We're going to try to sing Christmas carols. Christmas is on its way. May God bless you.